Good day grade tens and welcome to your last lesson in week eight. In this lesson we're going to be looking at word problems. We're going to be solving problems that are set as a word sum. In other words there's going to be no equation. We are going to develop our own equation. So let's look at what they've given us. They tell us that we've got 600 tickets are sold for a soccer match. Tickets for the adults cost 30 rand and tickets, tickets for the students cost 15 rand. The total amount of the ticket sales was 13,200. How many students bought the tickets? So the first thing that you need to realize is that whatever they ask for, that's what we're going to let be x. So we're going to say let the number of student tickets, student tickets, equal x. Now that's fine, but we were told that there were 600 tickets sold altogether. So if there were 600 tickets sold altogether, and X of them were bought by students, how many adults were there? There were obviously the number of adult tickets were what is left. So that would be the 600 minus X. Right. So now you can see that we've got two variables basically reference to one variable. In other words, we've got two sums, two values that are referenced to just the variable x, which is what we want. Don't start by going, oh, let the number of student tickets be x and let the number of adult tickets be y because then you won't be able to solve it. We want one variable that are related to each other. Okay, now let's look at something else that we're given. We were told that the total number of sales was 13,000 rand. So the total money in was 13,000 rand. Of that, 30 rand per ticket came from the adults. Therefore, we can say that the money in from the adults equals how much? It is obviously 30 rand per ticket for the adults, but the t adults were 600 minus x tickets. And the money in from the students, well, they only had to pay 15 rand. So therefore, it was 15 times by x. And the sum of this is going to be 13,200. And suddenly, we're able to do an equation with these variables. So let's have a look at it. We have got the money in from the students. I'll put them first. It's 15x plus the money in from the adults which is 30 times by 600 minus x equals a total of 13,200. So if we multiply this out, we get 15x plus 3 times 6 is 18. It's 18,000 minus 30x is equal to 13,200. Group all the x's on the one side, that's minus 15x is equal to 13,200 minus 18,000. Therefore, we've got minus 15x is equal to minus 4,800. And if you divide both sides of 15, negative 15, you get x is equal to 320. So we can see that we had 320 students buy tickets. Right, let's try another problem. This time we've got a girl who is traveling and she's covering 26 kilometers in three hours. She cycles part of the way at 10 kilometers per hour and walks part of the way at three kilometers an hour. And it says, how far does she walk? So what do we do? We say, let the distance she walked equal x. Right? Easy peasy. Therefore, the distance she cycled has to be the difference. So the total distance is 26 kilometers. She walked x. So therefore, the amount that she cycled is going to be 26 minus x. Okay, now let's draw a little picture that will help us see what's going on here. This is a total of 26 kilometers. She walked part of that. She walked x of that and she walked it at 3 kilometers an hour. Then she cycled 26 minus x of it and she did that at 10 kilometers an hour. Okay, so 
So I'm just going to put here kilometers per hour, so do we know what we're talking about? Kilometers per hour. We know that speed equals distance over time. Therefore, we also know that time is equal to distance divided by speed. And we know the total time she took. She took three hours. So therefore, we can work out the time she took to walk. The time she took to walk was the distance, which is x, over the speed, which is going to be x over 3. The time she took to cycle was 26 minus x, that's the distance, over the speed of 10. And together, if we add that, that has to equal 3 hours. And there we've got our equation. Let me write it out nicely. x over 3 plus 26 minus x over 10 is equal to 3. So now we can just solve this nice and easily. We've got a common denominator here of 30. 3 goes into 30 10 times. We've got 10x plus 10 times, 10, 10 goes into 30 3 times. So you've got 3 times 26 minus x is equal to 3. To get rid of that, all that we do is times both left hand side and the right hand side by 30. So we've got now that cancels. So we have 10x plus 3 times 26, 3, 6 to 18, that's 78, minus 3x is equal to 90. Now I'm running out of space, I'm just going to solve it on this side. Add the like terms, you've got 10x minus 3x is just 7x is equal to 90 minus 78. So you've got 7x is equal to 12. Therefore, x is going to be 12 divided by 7. And if we do that on our calculators, 12 divided by 7, we get 1.71. So x equals 1.71 kilometers. So that's how far she walked. Right, let's look at another problem now. Problem 3. If the price of Coke is increased by 1 rand, I can buy 5 fewer Cokes for, 50, for 30 rand. Calculate the price of the Coke before the price increases. Okay, so obviously we want to let the original Coke price equal X. Now we can do this in exactly the same way we did before, but I want to show you a new skill or a new tool. We can use a table. And I just want to show you this, and then you can decide which method you prefer. It really doesn't matter to me again, just as long as you use a method that works for you. So in our table, we're going to write three columns. We're going to say price. We're going to say number, which means number of Cokes. And we're going to say total cost. So the total cost, before and before, and we're going to write this sorry, as original and new. So we were doing this already, we just now are putting in a table to make it easier for us to see. So the original price was x and the total cost was 30 rand. So do you agree that the total number of cokes we could have got originally was 30 divided by x? Now the prices have gone up by 1 rand. So we've got x plus 1. We still only have 30 rand to spend. So now the number of cokes is 30 over x plus 1. And it says now we can buy 5 fewer cokes. So 30 over x minus 30 over x plus 1 equals 5. So now we have an equation. Isn't that awesome? So we've got 30 over x minus 30 over x plus 1 is equal to 5. And now we need to just get rid of this denominator by making a common denominator of x, x plus 1. x goes into x times x plus 1, leaves you just with x plus 1. So you've got 30 times x plus 1 minus x plus 1 goes into this, leaves you with 30x. And then to get rid of the denominator, what do we do? We divide times both the left hand side and the right hand side with the same thing that's in the denominator 
and what you do to one side you always do to the other side and luckily these cancel not luckily we organized it like that so then we multiply it out so we get 30x plus 30 minus 30x is equal to 5x times x is 5x squared 5x times 1 is just 5x luckily for us these cancel making it very easy so got 0 is equal to 5x squared plus 5x minus 30. So what nice is now you can see there's a nice common factor of 5. Again, I'm going to have to separate out the space. I'm running out of space. So we divide all of these by 5. So you get 0 is equal to x squared plus x minus 5 goes into 36 times. So we've got 6. Factors of 6 are 3 and 2. So we've got x plus 3 or x minus 2 equals 0. Therefore, x can either equal minus 3 or x equals 2. Now before we would have left it like that, but if you look at this, what is this telling you? It is telling you that you would, could have a negative number, I mean a negative price that the price could be in minus 3 rand and we know for a fact that you cannot have a negative so that answer is invalid so you always have to check for that when you're doing your word problems let's look at another example it says the product product means times of two consecutive negative integers is 1 1 2 2 find the two integers okay so it says the product of two consecutive negative integers. Now integers are whole numbers. These are whole numbers. Okay. And it says that there are two negative integers. Okay. So what I would do is I would say let the first integer integer be minus x. Right? Then it says consecutive. What does consecutive mean? Consecutive means one after the other. So therefore I say let the second integer be minus x plus 1. And now it says the product of these two is 1, 1, 2, 2. Okay, so let's multiply it out. Because minus x times by minus x plus 1 is equal to 1, 1, 2, 2. So let's multiply that out. It becomes minus times minus plus. So you've got x squared minus x. Okay, minus x is equal to 1, 1, 2, 2. So you've got x squared minus x minus 1, 1, 2, 2 is equal to 0. Oh, what a horrible question. So now, the reason I say it's horrible is because we're actually going to have to factorize this using the formula. So let's look at the formula. The F formula is, I'm going to put it right over here, x is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So what we're going to do is we're going to substitute the numbers into this formula. And that is the formula that we can use to solve quadratic equations. So the b stands for the coefficient of negative of the x. So in this case, b is equal to minus 1. The a stands for the coefficient of x squared, which in this case is 1. And the c is the last number, which in this case is 1, minus 1, 1, 2, 2. Right, so let's substitute it in. So we're going to get x is equal to minus minus 1 plus minus the square root of b squared, so it's going to be minus 1 squared minus 4 times by 1 times by negative 1, 1, 2, 2 and then all divided by, all divided by 2 times by 1. Okay, and then what we do is we just pop it in our calculator. So what do we got? We got 1 plus effectively 4 times 1, 1, 2, 2 and then we square root that. Oh, it works out to be a nice number. So we end up with minus times minus is a plus, it's 1 plus or minus 67 over 2. Therefore, your numbers are either, so therefore we have that either x is equal to 60 
1 plus 67 which is 68 over 2 or 1 minus 67 which is minus 66 over 2. So therefore we've got that x is equal to 68 divided by 2 which is 34 or it equals negative 33. But yeah, we've got to be careful because we said let the integer, the first integer be minus x, right? And we have to have negative x's. So if we say that the first integer is negative x and this will be negative 34 and that'll work, whereas this won't be. So we can cancel that out. And therefore, our first answer is going to be minus 34. And in fact, the other answer is also going to be minus 34 plus 1, which is minus 33. So two consecutive numbers are negative 34 and negative 33. Right, let's do another example. Okay, this one here is a little bit tricky and you need to think it through. But it's quite easy to do if you think it through. It says, and we're going to use a table again. It says, John can paint a wall in 10 hours. While he, and one day his friend Peter helped him and together took them four hours. How long would it take Peter alone? Okay, so let's think about this. We're going to do a table. Okay. And I'll tell you why we're doing a table. It just helps us think this through and see what the hell we're doing. So what would help? We're going to use a table so that we can think about what we're saying. So we've got per hour and the total job, the full job. So we're going to look at this and we're going to say, okay fine, we know that John takes 10 hours for the full job, right? This is John. So per hour he's taking one-tenth, he's doing one-tenth of the job. Okay, and here is Peter, and here they are together. Okay, together they take four hours. Okay, and therefore, and it's like together, their time per hour is one over four. And it says, how long would it take Peter alone? So, what are we going to let be x? We're going to get let the time it takes Peter to equal x. So therefore that is x and this is going to be 1 over x. Okay, do you understand that? But we know therefore that 1 over 10 which is the amount of time it takes John per hour plus 1 over x, the amount of time it takes Peter has to be the total time it works for them together which is 1 over 4. And now we have our equation that we can solve. So therefore we get 1 over 10 plus 1 over x is 1 over 4. We've got a common denominator of 40x. So I'm going to take, first I'm going to go 1 over 10 plus 1 over x minus 1 over 4 equals 0. Common denominator of 40x makes it easier, equals 0. 10 goes into 40, leaves me with 4x, that's 4x times 1 is just 4x, plus x goes into 40x, leaves me with 40, so that becomes plus 40 minus 10x. 4 goes into 40, leaves you 10x times 1. So now we get rid of the 40x by multiplying both sides by 40x, and obviously these side cancel, and that is naught, so that stays naught. So we've got 40x minus 10x becomes minus 6x is equal to 40. And then we can rearrange this. We can say, okay, fine, well, that's easy enough then. We're now going to divide. So we've got x, sorry, negative 40. x is equal to 40 divided by 6. And we pop that in a calculator. we go got 40 divided by 6. And that gives you 6.67. 6.67 hours. So the amount of time it would take Peter to learn is 6.67 hours. Right. I hope you notice that each of these problems is a different style of problem. Let's look at the last type of equation. Okay. Cabello is at the moment five times older, as old as his son Nicolai. Seven years from now, 
Cabello will be three times as old as his son. Find their ages. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let the current age of Cablichle be x. Okay. So therefore, the current age for Cabello is going to be what? It is obviously going to be 5x. Now it says in seven years time, in seven years time, in seven years time, Lichle is going to be how old? He's going to be x plus seven. And Cabello is also going to be seven years older. He's going to be five x plus seven. But this time the multiplication between them, the product division between them is three. So therefore, in seven years times, we can say that five x plus seven is going to be three times bigger than x plus seven. So in five years time, sorry, in seven years time, that's why we added the seven, Cabello is three times as old as Lechle. And then we just solve again. So we've got five x plus seven is equal to three x plus 21. Take it across, we get 2x is equal to 28. x is equal to 14. So the current age of Lechle is 14 and therefore he's 14. And therefore Cabello is 5 times 4 is 20, carry 2, he's 70 years old. Sure, it's quite old for a 14 year old child. Right, and that is it, grade 10s. You need to grade 10s, go practice, practice, practice. The best way you can do these things and get them right is to practice. And then once you've done that, go and check out whether or not you know it by using the assessment at the end of the section. Thank you, grade 10s. Have a lovely day. Thank <music> you.